Hey guys, and welcome back to another gigantic React video. Um, so let me break it down. I cut a third of the video out because I thought the beginning questions really were kind of just could be answered by any content creator. Um, and then I kept the last two thirds in here. Um, I got to say, I loved this SEL. It was a 10 out of 10 for me. It really stimulated uh, my takes. I was very opinionated. Um, I threw out a little bit of lecturing in there, a little bit of preaching in there. Um, I talk about the overall PVP community, about how I have some disappointment in the lack of testing, um, how I have a disappointment in people judging it based off of the, you know, the surface rather than delving into the complexities. I have complaints about people summarizing their takes to we just need speeds so um i would describe this react video as my mona lisa okay this is my picasso painting all right like this is this video the scl stimulated every aspect of what's coming in this patch for me i think i provided a complexity and a depth of answers that is so hard to create out of a video from thin air um so i really think i provide some transparency and some um, knowledge that you guys won't be familiar with like i'm really proud of this react i'm gonna admit that um i mean, i'm totally fine with it i really enjoyed this scl uh, i enjoyed my answers i just felt like i was really on tune with this so um it's a lengthy lengthy video i'm unapologetic about it um, but I really think you guys are going to enjoy this. I'll also say too, just because you've watched SEL does not mean you have any idea what this video is going to be like. Yeah, it is me 70% of the time. Okay, I am more the theme in this video than, uh, than the SEL React is. Okay, so just keep that in mind, right? Like you're going to be watching 70% of me uh, when it comes to this. So... It, I, I don't even want to include the words SCL because it's majority my takes. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, I think this video goes well. You know, you feel free to go audio only if you like. Um, it makes it the two hours more digestible. Um, but I'm going to leave it in because when anyone asks for the Virgil take on any of this stuff, master modes, you will be able to point to a part in this video. That's what I'm like telling you it is right now. It covers everything. Okay. So much of what I haven't put on any content yet. Um, so much complexity that's so hard to talk about in, um, on YouTube to strangers and stuff. Like it's really hard to cover some of this content. Um, but yeah, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this if you give it the time. Um, so yeah. Let me know what you think. Uh, let's debate all of this in the comments. If you disagree with me, let me know in there. If you agree with me, let me know in there. Let's me know I'm close to baseline. Um, let's debate it out. Let's get into the comment section of this video, okay? Because that's what I love about this stuff. I really like going back and forth. And I'll tell you what I like even more is when you guys go back and forth in my comment section. It's amazing, okay? Uh, just another reminder too, I do have answer the call shared with avenger one um this weekend on salty mike's stream so make sure you guys cover that debate uh in that podcast that'll be really fun um and also just keep in mind there's a bit of a jump here right like again i cut the a third of the beginning of this scl so it just jumps right into the middle of it uh don't mind that it's worth watching all right guys i'll uh i'll see you guys on the other end so now, because Rich, you mentioned, or Yogi, you mentioned that, you know, nav mode is what helps players get away and stuff like this and how we're going to com uh, combat that and stuff. The most voted on question was, can you explain in detail how quantum dampeners and quantum snares will work on ships in nav mode? Here we go. Not yet. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, the thing is like the... Um, the um, obviously like quantum quantum dampening and snaring and in general keeping or trapping players within the SEM speed is uh, something that makes uh, or has a big uh, impact on on combat itself. But the thing is, we don't have not specifically implemented that part yet. 
it's on the to-do list for uh, for 323. Three. Three. Whether we're going to make it for 323 three or not, we don't know yet. Because there's... Here's the problem, though. If they don't make it for 3.23, then we're in big trouble, right? Because then we're going to have traders just out flying combat ships the whole time. Um, yeah, concerning. Um, yeah, because I, I just worry about the PU here, you know, like that's the big one. I worry about the ecosystem and the the overall gameplay of the PU, piracy, security, chasing bounty hunters, you know, trying to um, cargo haul, you know, is that just insanely easy now? I think they might be worried that people think that um, the non-combatant play styles are going to be at huge risk because they don't have shields. I'm on the opposite side of that thinking they're going to be too powerful because they have four times our speed. Uh, you know, and then if we, we have to drop two, you know, a quarter of the speed to be able to engage them. And by that time that you've even hit the brakes and gotten, you know, your weapons and shields up, whatever, they're gone. So I really worry that we're not going to be able to catch these uh, haulers, not going to be able to catch bounties, you know, and um, plays with crimes, that stuff like that it might be just hard. And it's a huge, huge um, mechanic in the PU that needs to get addressed. I think this needs to be answered before 323. Otherwise, the PU, I don't think, is going to make sense for the most part. <clears throat> There's a couple of things we still need to iron out. For example, do we simply say you cannot you cannot boost away? Do we need to take the size of the ship that wants to uh, escape into account? Do we just change the spool timers? These are all just small details which we haven't yep, uh, okay. haven't tried out and uh, internally tested yet. Um, I mean, this also leads to the question that at three to three is is like not not the full experience for master modes, right? It's just the first step. There there will be stuff missing. Um, the ships will not be as varied as we would like them to have later. So this will be like we will build on that work, but exactly if quantum dampening and uh, et cetera will be there in, on day one when master mode releases, I do not know yet. It A lot of people freak out and panic about, um, you know, master modes. It's like, yeah, like I said in the last video, the last couple of videos, it's a framework, guys. It's a platform to launch from. Like you are not seeing anywhere close to the finished product. What you need to look at with master modes is does it make sense with the overall picture? Are, you know, big ships involved? Is multi-crew involved? Is um, the speeds, is the desync bad? Is the hit registration bad? You know, and then after you've ticked those boxes, then you start looking at what do these archetypes bring to the table? Are they fun? Is there variation in what they can do? Are they pigeonholed into a single play style, um, stuff like that. And that's the thing for me, right? Is when I'm being toxic, um, positive, toxic positivity over here. Um, you know, I like master modes. I'm referring to it, ticking all those prior boxes. Um, and then I'm also just under the assumption that they're going to get there with the rest. And I think they are, I think that they are very heavily invested in making light fighter you know interceptor medium fighter heavy fighter competitive gameplay with depth with variation i think is the most important word to use their variation like different ways to play it um and i think that that's very complicated in design i think that in our discord you're starting to see like some next level algebra you know mathematic einsteins inside our Shadow Moses Discord talking about this stuff when it comes to the feedback. But I think um, people are starting to find more common ground. Uh, and I'm very hopeful that CIG will reach that common ground as most of the player base has um, when it comes to the sophistication of combat, um, you know, and creating variation, depth, stuff like that. Um, but I'm just hopeful it, it gets there. This is the first time everything has made sense. That's what's the most important, right? It's the first time the flight model has made sense. Yeah, there might have been things you loved about it, okay? Because you were part of the, you were playing the 10% of ships that were viable and you were playing the one loop that was viable while 90% of the other ships and 90% of the other community didn't fit into that picture. So when people are like really toxic about how master mode speeds is like really 
you know, slow and all this stuff. It's like, just understand that like you are what the tiny, tiny fraction of the people enjoying it and everyone else has to fit into this. So, you know, like we're all going to be happy with it at the end of the day. I do believe that, but you gotta, you gotta be understanding of that. And so, well, the uh, normal work progress continues in the next few weeks. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, let, 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 let's remember that there's a, that there's a, there's a reason uh, I've been referring to the first half of 2024 when I talk about when these features are arriving. Uh, the, the normal, uh, if folks haven't figured, some folks have figured it out, some folks have The normal quarterly release cadence doesn't really apply to a patch that's this big and whatnot. 3.23 has enough content in it that would have covered three normal quarterly patches. So since December, so uh, looking the forward first to 3.23, guys, post, I really am. Specific about I feel like my content is really going to skyrocket with 3.23. Like we got UGFs, FPS gameplay, FPS content, FPS changes, the flight model, a wealth of ships that are going to have different personalities. You're going to be able to see my organization in full force. Like you're going to get to see competitive PVP that makes sense. Um, hopefully it's in a bit better shape, but making sense. Um, you know, I, I want to see these big Titan organizations clashing, PvP organizations fighting each other rather than just scouring around for, you know, large groups of people who don't know what they're doing. You know, looking forward for, to some org drama, some org wars, alliances, all that jazz, you know, uh, piracy, all this stuff. It feels like it's going to make sense. And on top of that, maybe part of the, you know, in the, in the PTU and stuff, like I'm really looking forward. I think we're reaching, uh, the curve and the hockey stick and i'm excited for 323 i really am about speaking about the first half of 2023 we don't have a date to give you uh but for those uh, <coughs> i already see folks in chat like oh this comes out next week and they don't figure out no it doesn't come out next week uh still being worked on and like i said when we have an update i'm sure we'll share it with you um all right but now you know why we didn't start with that question uh with the new nav mode uh, with the way nav mode has been described, will we be able to stay in it and travel everywhere, avoiding combat? Yeah, what there are the we plan go. limitations of nav mode? So you will be able to always stay in nav mode, oh. whether it's uh, suitable for you to do that. Um, is Which eliminates the options right now. We have two routes. Do combatants pursue nav mode um, targets, uh, non-combatants, and then bring them both out into SCM together or is a SCM pilot that sees a nav mode co pilot coming by, whether it's a bounty, a um, target for piracy, you know, a security NPC, a thief, you know, like a crime set NPC, whatever player, whatever you want to use that example for. Do they have a device or some long range mechanic to pull them out? Interesting. But this is a concern, right? Because we... Like, we don't want to kill piracy here, um, you know, is the best example I can use. It's a different question. You will just not be able to access certain operator modes from nav mode. So things like scanning, for example, you, you can, but the guns operator mode, the missile operator mode, um, mining and salvaging will not, be, will not be available in nav mode. So you can just go around, but this also means like your shields are not effective. Which means, if you are, unless you're currently quantum traveling, you're still vulnerable to to attacks. Yeah, but are you vulnerable to attacks if the targets are in SCM? So, uh, but when you're spooled and you are under attack, you still have the option to. I, I mean, not not for now, but later when the new quantum travel experience comes online and you have quantum boost, you can actually get out of this thing very fast. Um, but still, there's no like there's no clear no to this uh, to, uh, to the question whether or not you're invulnerable to combat you're you're not if you're flying around in normal space you can be attacked one way or another yeah but you're flying at speeds again you're like fly you're flying the old flight model at a thousand but 90 percent of the like here's the problem if you're a trader and you're going to do a route a b to c you're going to go from a b to c you're going to spend 90 percent of the time inside of nav mode and you're going to go into SCM when you're landing at A, B, and C. So does that just mean that the piracy windows are only in A, B, or C? How do we pull them out? How do we catch them? Like, how do we merge with them um, if you are wanting to pirate a target? Because we can all see this right now. 
if he can sit into nav mode as an unlimited resource, then they're going to be at that the whole time. So I don't know if like they're holding back because they've got a mechanic in mind or if they're still talking about it and stuff, but they've got to realize, you know, that this doesn't benefit the SCM parts. This, like if they're worried about a concern where the traders are going to be upset that they've got too, too much uh, risk, it's the opposite. It's that there, there is no risk if they're the trader pilot because I think they're going to get away so easy. Another route they could have taken is just like pretty harsh um, nav mode limitations on, you know, like a Caterpillar nav is like 800 or something like that maybe. But yeah, like this is this is a worry about mine because I just I worry about the ecosystem here. I worry that non-combatants are just going to use this as a soft PvP slider to avoid combat because they've got the speed and the combatants of all types, whether it be security, piracy, organizations, PVP, bounty hunting, uh, you know, criminal players, all of them are playing without the speeds. So I worry, I worry about this. I think people are trying to piece together this question too. Um, I want to poke, I want to poke, uh, poke in here. Uh, st still Tomo 2. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, going back to the previous question, he goes, he goes, you'd think uh, 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 quantum interdiction stuff would be uh, architected before all these master mode changes. La Mao, he says. Uh, uh, why, 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 why is the quantum interdiction stuff, why is this a secondary consideration to all the other breadth of work being done on master modes? Uh, I think this has more to do with the uh, realities of how games are developed. Um, things like quantum interdiction speaks very strongly to uh, the quantum travel experience. And um, when we created master modes, um, we did this roughly in parallel with a new quantum travel experience for Squadron. The thing is that although these things work together... See, there's some, people, the there's some people in the chat reading between the lines, right? Like, is this a PVE button? You know, like, this is the concern, right? Like, it, like... I didn't even read, like, this guy's comment came after I just stated that, is this a soft PvP slider? So, good to see that some of the guys that are in the chat on the live stream were, you know, are aware of the ramifications of non-combatants being inside of NAV the entire time, as it's been described to us. Separately back to the PU. Um, so... Um, and uh, quantum dampening is not a thing that that is of a big importance in in, in, in squadron. So that feature, when co in combination with master modes, was just not uh, was just not ready. But we but the thing is, if we if we don't move tech that's ready over early, then we're dragging a lot of like legacy with us all the time. Um, so this basically for for master modes, or for, let's say for the for IFCS, that means that we that large parts of the codes is there doubled there because we know which parts we can throw away uh, when master mode is active and we know which parts we can uh, keep. But if we keep too much legacy stuff around for a long time, um, yeah. it just increases the maintenance effort a lot. Yeah. So, um, and also the game is not finished. Um, so this, these things, they just happen. Yeah. It's like engineering and game design is hard. <laughs> it's really, really hard. Well, but, uh, you, that's a wonderful answer, uh, Yogi, that, uh, that um, our, our friend still Tomo has has reduced to QD not important, which is not at all what Yogi said. What Yogi said is there aren't other players using QD in Squadron <laughs> 42, God. and we're moving a Squadron 42 feature over to the PU. So it wasn't in the original Master Modes mandate because it wasn't necessary in Squadron 42. <laughs> now it will be considered and now it will be addressed in the PU, is what he said. He did not say it wasn't important. That's you. Also, Being it's bad. also important to... This is a problem when you get combatant players that have had combat completely reworked underneath them. Like, I really appreciate this team um, and I really appreciate the game, right? But this is a consequence. Like, I think the reason some of these guys are spicy in the Twitch chat is because they've been flying, you know, a stable combat experience for, you know, two, three years, right? Um, and we're at year 11 doing the combat like it is it is realistic and honest to say that this should have been sorted out far far sooner right like combat flying a spaceship in a spaceship game that has toilets inside of the spaceships okay and bathrooms and you know 
plushy toys inside of the universe of a space game, flying the spaceships should have been solidified year two at the latest, right? Like the moment this thing went online. So the fact that there's been such so many constant revisions, so many reinventing of the wheel, um, it's excessive and it is ridiculous, to be honest. Like we shouldn't be having this discussion year 11, you know, like we shouldn't have an entire another system of space, moons, planets and stuff before we even know how are we going to traverse it, right? Like, so for the... This is why people are spicy. This is why there's debate. This is why there's arguments. This is why people are quote unquote, like wanting to walk away from the game. Although I think they're being dramatic. They're going to come right back around. I know they always do. I can't, I don't know a single person who's walked away and hasn't came back and you'll all be back, which is fine. Um, but you know, like it, it in their defense, um, the people who feel negative about it. Yeah. Like it's, it's been a bit silly that we're, we're this long into the journey of the game and we still haven't figured out flight or combat. Um, but, I, but this is what I'm looking forward to is now that I think this is it. I think this is the time where they won't keep reinventing the wheel and we'll have it. Um, and I got to say at first glance, the platform slash the framework looks good because it makes sense. I am seeing players in constellations. I'm seeing players in hammerheads with turrets, killing light fighters, killing medium fighters, heavy fighters. I'm seeing the Vanguard back. My gosh, we're flying the Super Hornet, right? Are things perfect? No. Do, does it need a lot of work? Yes. But it's ticking those boxes already. It is. Um, but a huge box in which it has to tick for all of this to make sense, which is the bigger picture, um, is that, you know, you don't want non-combatants flying at five times the speed uh, as a combatant player when those two gameplay loops are supposed to intersect so that that's an important one it like before i can ultimately say i love the entire framework of master modes i need to make sure or i need to see that piracy is still possible bounty hunting a target that is trying to evade me in nav is still possible. That nav mode isn't a soft PVP slider, you know, um, that quantum interdiction makes, uh, makes sense and stuff because yeah, it's not important in squad battle because we're being forced to PVP in a fish tank, but you add the gigantic PU to the equation, you know, big open space planets, moons, then it's a whole different story, a whole different story. So. It's also important to consider that, you know, our team is part of these conversations pretty early on, and we call out this stuff really early, and it could be developed in a way that let's focus on master mode and then figure this stuff out later. But we mentioned these things early. We mentioned how do you how do you tackle a ship? <laughs> how does the mantis work in this context? Yes. And Yogi and Rich are already thinking about that ahead of time. Even if they're not necessarily solving those problems right away, they're like, how how does this fit into the overall picture anyway? Mm -hmm. And so we already consider those things and we call those out extremely early in the process so that they are part of the overall design, uh, even if we don't get to them right away. Yeah. And, and now that, and, and now that we're just, we're just proving that we're live I mean, it says it's live in the corner right now, but folks, I didn't say there was no QED in Squadron 42. I said there were no other players. There's no PVP QED. I mean, you can imagine a world where things might work differently in single player than it would. It's in a different when universe, you're talking the to the PVP community. Right, That's like I can see, I can see, um, Jared getting a bit, you know, stressed, I guess, or something, annoyed maybe at the Twitch chat, but yeah, like you can understand too. It's like this is the core gameplay loop. Like this is what was pitched at the very beginning. the The dawn of the uh, of Star Citizen was fighter combat, so it's just something everyone's very passionate about. It's definitely been mistreated. Um, I can understand the players' frustrations, um, and I can also understand Jared here, but... Too. I don't have my zoom-in camera. I would stare for a while. Just imagine the cameras zooming in because I'm, I'm staring at you because you know better. All right. How do master modes, uh, especially the nav mode, work in atmosphere? We haven't talked about it. Is there any reasonable change to how slower. they work in atmosphere? 
Um, nope. So it's going to fly the same as it does currently. So if you take a so if you take a ship um, in nav mode into atmosphere, you're going to suffer the same drag, you know, consequences um, of that. And then if you switch to SEM, you can be limited to those speeds. Okay. <clears throat> Pretty simple. Uh, this was a big one. Uh, I've been wondering this one. How, are there any plans for the SEM and nav mode transition times to differ between ships? For example, through engineering optimization, either ship role or even component archetype or tuning. Yep. Uh, will it be the yes. same for every ships or different? Talk to me about this. I love this like being like possibly, you know, a nav mode spool up time could be a statistic or a stat, sorry, tied to a component. You know, like if you've got a great qu quantum drive, maybe that quantum drive is great because it's got a faster spool time into nav. Um, stuff like that. Like I find that very interesting. Um, you know, like maybe uh, you need a certain size quantum drive to carry such a big hulking ship. And so with that comes the longer times. But I do like the idea of balancing this up against the ships or at least the weight classes you know are they size one components two three whatever but um yeah great question and uh i just assumed we're gonna see varying results i didn't think it was gonna be unified across all the ships because would be bad balance uh no they're they're definitely different um so the Perfect. the um the swap time is defined by two things one is a, a value currently which we currently set per ship the other one is uh, defined by the quantum drive that you're using because the quantum drive, um, when you go into nav mode, the quantum drive spools up and this is the thing that unlocks the high speeds. Um, specifically, uh, like, like I don't want to talk about engineering gameplay because another team is handling that, but, but it is a value that can, that can potentially be changed by, I don't know, tweaking your, your quantum drive. As I said, I, I don't want to talk specifically about this because this is not, not my area. Um, but in the initial um, master mod release for 323, the ships will have different uh, values in terms of spool times, um, specifically between like fighters or interceptors. Interceptors, for example, they, they spool just faster because we want them to be fast and to uh, actually work as interceptors uh, when they need to. Um, so yeah, so the, the difference, there, there will definitely be different times. Um, and specifically, the larger the ship, usually the longer the time uh, becomes to to, spool, yeah. uh, to swap the modes. Yeah, unless we create something hyper specialized, you know, like a ship that's designed yeah. for that kind of switch like this. Uh, what, what was it? Uh, uh, Drift, Drift Bosa says, so pretty much they want to make this game single player. Oh, Drift Bosa, nobody sure. else, nobody, no, nobody else, everybody else, earmuffs. I'm talking just to. Stop reading the negative questions. Yes, that's actually secretly what I'm actually saying. You should go to Reddit. Go to Reddit and say I said that. Just you. You're the only one who knows. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> why is there no UI and HUD update coming with the master mode update in 3.23? That is not true. Uh, but, okay, it's, it's a little bit true. So in general, the, uh, the new MFDs and so on, and the new ship layouts and so on, which you've seen in the CitizenCon presentation, um, they won't be in 3.23. What will come to 3.23, however, is the visor-based update, which meaning all gunnery, um, gunnery improvements, uh, target brackets, like all the 3D thing that is uh, projected to whatever it needs to be projected to, uh, so at, uh, at this appropriate distance. Which is worth mentioning, it's so bad. Like, it's so, so bad. I don't want to knock on anyone's work, but the UI element to the gunnery system, it's so hard to see. Like, it's so hard to see. Like, we already had a visibility problem with the last gunnery system, like the crosshair, the pip, stuff like that. Um, maybe 20, 10% of the time during the experience, it was, you couldn't see it. Like, you literally couldn't see it. Um, so the more competitive you played, the bigger it was of an issue. Um, but now it's an issue half the time. Um, yeah, red and green uh, up against majority of the backdrops in Star Citizen does not translate well it is so hard to see we need to get some like outlines on these uis boys because yeah uh the ui needs work not to say it like looks bad but the colors like we can't see it guys that's what it is it's a ui where you can't see it half the time you're trying to squint up close to your screen to get a look at it and you know you're losing track of it because the colors don't make sense that stuff um 
that stuff will make it in. Uh, this also means like we're removing all this, uh, these old 2D uh, based uh, sprites that you have on the, on the aiming UI. So, uh, so th there's a partial UI update for it. Yeah. And it should be noted that it's, I mean, as, as you'll see with all with other things, it's impossible to work on everything, all things at all times. And the and many members of the UI team have a very have very important work with the Mobi Glass, the Star Map, the internal maps, all the work that's coming into three twenty three. So, it it stands to reason that there are some things that are going to have to be delayed and come later. Um, one of the things that we talked about in the show, and uh, I uh, Mike and Brent this is one of those ones I expect to hear uh, from you quite on, is the struggles with master modes in one and one v one. So let's talk about that for a bit. Uh, what are the struggles uh, with that master mode? Because we, we we've all seen it internally. You, even I've seen it internally in these giant fur balls of like squadron battle. Master modes is fantastic. It keeps the screen full of other ships and stuff, and you really feel like you're 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 in this huge epic space battle. But that isn't translating as well as we'd like for one on one. So talk to me. What is the issue? And then what are we thinking about? pursuing as far as a solution. Uh, I'll talk a little bit a about... Go ahead. <laughs> Brent, go ahead, actually. No, 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 I was just going to say there's definitely a lot there. Um, it can even just be on balancing, whether it be the tuning of the ship, how it handles, or just even health pools, or even like the weapon gunnery changes that are coming. Um, I mean, there's definitely a, a lot of things that can contribute to why 1v1s sometimes don't feel the best, but the, the furball or the... Squadron battle feels really good too. Uh, Bayor, I think you have more on that too, of like I'll why the one of, I'll mention a couple of key observations that I think players are having with it. Uh, because we limited the velocity space uh, with master modes, you're seeing people get this locked in feeling where they're hitting these max speeds and they can't go beyond that, and their opponent is hitting the max speeds, and you get kind of stuck in a position where you can't get an advantage over them. Uh, that it's like you're in a fight and then you're developing a river like you, like a river is being created at your feet right and then you know halfway into the duel that's it you're going downstream you know like and you have very little control to swim to any side of the river to go upstream downstream to the shores of the stream like you kind of get this stuck in the mud feeling um there's some a lot of very advanced discussions in the Shadow Moses Discord about this in the Mastermind Feedback channel. Um, a lot of it goes way beyond me. But um, yeah, that's the issue. A lot of people feel like they're stuck in the river when it comes to 1v1s. But keep in mind too, this is mirror matches because this is when you're looking at two um, of the flight characteristics, the bubbles, the speed ceilings, interacting with each other in the same shape when you get two different shapes interacting it's easier for them to bridge the gap or for one to push on the other but when it's a mirror match it gets more difficult it's kind of like the the flight characteristics of a mirror match um, have a real hard time gaining any sort of position on each other because they have the exact same flight characteristics so it feels particularly worse in um in a mirror match that's that locked in feeling caused by the velocity space itself. Um, in addition to, you know, a lot of 1v1s are mirror matches. We there we go. Match. Look, so based bail. The same ship. So the most common is going to be Gladius versus Gladius, right? Um, and when you're facing the same ship, you have the exact same performance characteristics. So you can counterbalance one another pretty easily. And you yeah. end up with a, a head on situation quite often. And this is something we're observing uh, a lot of when players are talking about it. And, you know, we're, we're advising Yogi, advising Rich that this is something that we're seeing. Players are talking about it a lot. And as for solutions, I'll kind of let Yogi and Rich talk about that a bit more. But that's the information we're, we're passing on. That's it. That, okay. that, is, that is so much the truth of it, right? And I think the answer is this, okay? Let's get, we're going to get real deep real quick here, okay? I think that the tuning of the archetypes and the personalities of individual ships should not just be how fast is their forward, how fast is their turn rate, um, and then what's their different ship components in relation to like hard points and stuff. Instead, I think it is the shape of these ceilings. I think aggressive base pilots should have the egg and, and understand that I'm referring to the egg here, right? Like a, an agenda, a lot of the people, the, the competitive PVP community is proposing on the Shadow Moses Discord is that they want to change, they want 
the shape of the which is a sphere right now for non-combat and then it's um it can be described as an egg or a pill uh in uh boosted combat um they want to change that shape into a strawberry so what that would necessarily do right like um is if it was a strawberry you would have a lot of maneuverability in the la uh, the lateral strafes like up down left right um once you're pushing aggression right once you're pushing forward and then if you're playing a neutral so um you know at the core of it or um back strafing you'd have like a strawberry um a smaller ceiling right a smaller uh, reach or um smaller radius uh to work with so what that would do is promote combat that closes distance on each other um and to quote bayo it would um create a counterbalance right so but the problem is too is the the uh, the issue i have with that is then that makes combat purely aggression based like you only want to aggress so i like the idea personally my only unique tick i like it being more like an hourglass experience where it's like staying neutral reduces your lateral strafes up down left right um backing up gives you some freedom to use your left right up strafes but it's hindered, right? So if it was an hourglass, it's smaller on the backside, and then aggression gives you far more maneuverability. So on the forward side, uh, it's this is such an advanced thing, but I think this is the absolute key or the secret to the success of um, really great geometry in combat is get wild with these with these shapes of these speed limitations. I think that the egg, the sphere, the strawberry. These, this is the key to making interesting personal combat. I don't think the answer is just turn rate. I don't think the answer is just how many shields do they have? What's their top speed? You know, I think the answer is inside of these shapes of ceilings. You know, like light fighters can be aggressive and maneuverable when they're up close. A, um, you know, a interceptor can be more of a cylinder, like a pipe, so that they're very fast on the streets, slower on the laterals the entire time, but decent turn rate, you know, in that case, it would be like a pipe, um, you know, like heavy ships, you know, you'd probably just make them a sphere because they're heavy and deterring, um, you know, like airspace, but you know, like a, a bomber could be like, um, you know, a pipe with um, up and down strafes a lot heavily, you know, so that they can drop bombs on a target, then pull up. So they've got that up and down, um, you know, strafes that are powerful. Their forward thrust can be very powerful, but then their left and rights could be really weak. That could make an interesting bomber type personality. Like, but I do think the key to success is these shapes. I think every, this game becomes so much special more special if these shapes get interesting but if we're just talking about eggs and spheres the whole time i think that uh there won't be much room for variation in combat um and a lack of personality with ships like the answer isn't this ship has great turn rate this ship can turn left a little faster and this ship can turn up a little faster i think it's the shapes of these um you know speed bubbles for sure and i think it, they could get real creative with it you know like an alien ship can be you know 45 based on the turn rate and it could have like some freakish left and right strafes you know and um maybe like a really bad back strafe but a good forward strafe or something like that you could they could get unique with that but i think that's what's going to create interesting unique geometry across ships um and i don't know if it's the route that they're going or not and there might be reasons as to why but I don't think the answers should just be this ship turns different to this. This ship has a slower, like what's the turn rate speed? What is the faster turn rate? And, um, you know, what's the weight of the ship? How fast forward does it go? How weak is the left up right? Um, I do think that that shape could get very interesting and make things really great. You know, like an alien ship that is purely tricord, bicord based, you know, flying left, right, up, down by themselves, isolated could be really useless. Imagine how freaky and cool of an experience that could be with with balance, of course. But I think that I think that is where people are heading. And a lot of the feedback with the fighters, the combat pilots that are really breaking this down. I'm talking about the the Einsteins of dogfighting that are talking in these discords um, pretty heavily in the Shadow Moses Discord too. They're finding that after all the iterations, after all the flight models. The shape of the egg or the shape of the strawberry, the sphere, whatever you want to call it, 
is the most important aspect. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> sorry. No, you. No, you go. Go. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Yeah. So you know we do a lot of iterative testing here um, on the vehicle team. So <clears throat> you know we're constantly testing new things, and you know make and his team did a really good job of providing the feedback and then we discuss that feedback but then we action that feedback i mean testing and we try and find out what causes it and, and it's never just like oh just move this thing here i'll just move this thing here it's like it's it's always like a really complicated combination of things that yes you know so are quite difficult to get sometimes and also difficult you know to, to basically implement it in the game you know because we've got very complex mathematics behind a lot of the systems in the game so is it just a case of just tweaking one number here and there we've got to really break down and really understand the problem of what's causing it right you know i said we do a lot of you know we do a lot of play testing we get a lot of feedback internally but we also do i don't envy these guys too because you guys gotta, gotta understand they have systems upon systems upon systems like chris's goal with this was to individually program every thruster you know this isn't just make object go up left right you know in any other space game you know we are talking about like heat systems cooling you know power you know um isolating when certain thrusters are lost on a ship or destroyed and then trying to keep a ship stable and able to fly with uh without them you know like we're talking about drift g's you know all kinds of stuff this the programming must be a nightmare for this thank god they've spent all this time doing systems so they can they've got some dials they can turn um, but we are talking about so many different systems converging and they haven't cut any corners because chris won't allow it right he wants you know every program every button in a cockpit to do something he wants um every thruster to be individually programmed stuff like that so it's a monumental amount of work and it's insane that in a thousand employee a thousand employee company they had such a small team for this. It's crazy. Imagine in a space game, you know, you got a, like five guys working space. It's crazy. Uh, space flight, sorry. Crazy. A lot, you know, a lot so, of perspective in the forums and everywhere else to get a lot of feedback to understand. The stress you know, they must be under is crazy. Why the combat is the way it is. Yeah, it is extremely hard to, like, like the, the feedback from master modes was very, very diverse. Like uh, I mean, just the just the comments on the on the YouTube video that that we had last time was very diverse. And then, I mean, we're also like monitoring discords and so on. And like, uh, what I usually do is I I I I, I listen to the worries that the players have, but I let be like I, I let Bayer and Brand actually and like uh, come up with actual uh, proposal because for me it's very hard to to filter through um, what is. Um, What's actually actionable feedback, um, but in terms of like what we're trying, so so we absolutely agree that the one we want they're a little bit uh, meh at the moment. But this is um, this has to do exactly with the with the problem of the velocities, right? We want to yes. we want to not go into high velocities because it just because going into high velocities just causes one thing, and this is dragging out the fights more. The yeah, and it, it starts to. Um... You know, it starts to isolate, you know, fighters and fighting it, it um, you know, multi-crew, large ships, heavier weight classes, capitals and stuff just, you know, get left behind. So, and so does terrain. So does evading between asteroids. So does gunnery, missiles, torpedo gameplay, you know, turrets. The, the more this speeds have, it drastically starts to deteriorate the other loops. So, like, I, again, I understand why people complain about the speeds, but it's relative, right? Like, it's it's how you, it's agility. What you're craving, I think, for the most part is agility and momentum and energy. Those all exist in any flight speed, right? Like, some of the best combat I've ever seen in Star Citizen, some of the most competitive jujitsu looking combat where i'm just like damn like that is some maverick from top gun shit we're talking 100 meters guys 100 meters you know like 150 sometimes 200 so we have the speeds to play it but um we need to have the agility and the personality the variation inside of it but just lifting the cap the game deteriorates in every aspect in desync hit reg networking the use of terrain the agility goes away when you increase the speeds because then we're all flying down the river or, or swimming down a river you know um multi-crew all the archetypes start to get excluded from combat so yeah this is that's why i'm a big big 
um, supporter of the slower speeds. You know, do I think it's the final right solution? No, um, but I do know from five years of playing this game at the highest competitive level, max velocity, uh, the, the higher it gets, the more detrimental it is. It's not good. It just isn't. It breaks things. It excludes things. And, uh, some people don't like that take of mine, but can't help it, dudes. It's the truth. Only the only class that really benefited from high velocities were light fighters. Yeah. Um, yep. And, and, the, and the legacy systems, there were not a lot, lot of space All for like light and medium fighters. Um, yep. uh, sorry, uh, for, for medium uh, and heavy fighters. So in terms of like what we're trying to make this more more, more interesting in, in 1v1s is like we're trying to break up that specific pattern where you have two ships circling each other and then they're feeling locked in. Like one of the tries that we that we did was actually adding um, uh, dynamic, more dynamic rotational speeds so that when you hold boost, your, your boost pool needs to spool up first before it is expanded and then it actually not just gives you higher accelerations, it also gives you higher rotation rates and so on. That that did a little bit, but but not enough yet. We do hope that um, with other things like uh, more, in general, like smoothing accelerations out a little bit more, so you don't get like the in, like a super strong initial kick, but rather like ramp them up. That this will create enough like diversity in the in the maneuvering, so that we're um, so that we're getting like in a better place with the one v ones again. Yeah. Um, that said, uh, six degrees. Yeah. So diversity in maneuvering. That's it. Right, and the problem is, is it's not very diverse when it's just an agrosphere. These are very, very simple, uh, simplistic shapes. So you turn this thing into like a starfish, for example, just random, right? But like, you know, a strawberry, the more exotic this shape gets, the more weird angles and geometry gets created. Um, you know, I don't know if they're going to go down that route. I'm hopeful they are because I think that is the ultimate realization that everyone's going to find is that's where you get the most characteristics out of a flight model is is that um but yeah i think um he's he's preaching the truth here so freedom is is very hard to to balance like uh, michael talked yep. about the feeling of locked in another worry that always comes up is like the feeling of like of backstrafing right so the backstra and you want to lock people in because that's what master modes needed to do it needed to lock people into combat it needed to make combat make sense because if you're not locking people in, they're drifting out and it breaks and then it just systemically ruins combat in all aspects. So we needed the combat to remain confined is the word I use. Like, but then you don't want people to feel like they're too stuck in the river when it comes to a 1v1. River style gameplay is great in master modes because that's what like merging is, right? You're merging down a river. Um, you're merging on your, you know, bounty or your uh, piracy target, stuff like that. So in the group gameplay, the river gameplay is fine, you know. But when it comes to the 1v1 duels, people want jujitsu, wrestling, you know, a cage fight, you know, so to speak. So two completely different flight models almost. Um, and people need to be understanding of that, right? Um, because if you compare the live dueling 1v1s they were not in a better shape like they were more broken they didn't make sense they weren't like you know what you'd expect to see from a 1v1 in a sci-fi movie or anything like that um you know and now we're starting to see geometry there's massive issues but you know there's been some examples that people are posting where you're getting pancakes you're out maneuvering your opponents and stuff and it's more prevalent when you're going up against different archetypes when you're seeing different shapes interacting um, but, uh, it's, you know, non-existent in the mirror matches, which is what Bayor, based Bayor is what we're going to call him. Um, because that's his job is to literally be based. Um, he's oh, hi highly aware of it's the mirror matches are the biggest issue, right? But, but the other, my counterpoint to that would be, yeah, like we're not seeing interesting geometry in mirror matches, but when we are having two different archetypes go up against each other, I would say to Bayor that the shapes need to be more um, exotic or, or sophisticated to allow for variation as well. Because we do like when a Gladius is pushing up against a medium heavy fighter and trying to push for position while the medium heavy fighter is trying to defend itself, right? But the problem is, is there's no way for those medium or heavy fighters to play an aggressive play style because their shape 
in regards to defending themselves against a light is to only lean back into the back of the shape to the bottom of the egg and try to defend itself. So with the shapes become more interesting, I think that that would spring life to variation. Gosh, we are getting deep here, boys. Creating feeling itself is, is just mathematically hard to endure because you need to, you need to have an insane amount of acceleration to actually overcome a target that is accelerating backwards on you just to get around by this, right? Yes. It, it, that's really, really complicated. So we're... And that's the problem too, right? Like, it is so complicated. Like, you're talking about time to reach the target, um, the distance to gap. Like, is the forward advantage good enough to gap the distance but when you two are going down the river and to get up to someone that's back strafing because yeah they might have 200 speed on the back strafe right but then there might be 800 meters of separation and then you're going forward so if you only have say for example hypothetically a 300 speed limit on forward and a 200 on backward you have to get you still have to gap all 800 meters of that distance before you can even start entering combat and if you just know, if you just buff, you know, like huge acceleration forward bus, right? Then the problem is, is once you get there, once you get to your target, now you have another problem. The other target can just push straight away out, out of it. So the other guy can defend himself by using his now powerful forward acceleration to just break any geometry combat at a second's notice anyways. So like, you got to give these guys um, some patience. Because this is, people are often, when they're breaking down really sophisticated combat, they look at what, okay, the issue is we can't get close up and, and position against someone. Once you get that position, how are you going to maintain it? You know, like, what are the toxic ways that people are going to get out of that position? This, you need to think of the whole longevity of a fight here. You know, the whole duration of a fight. Um, and that's the problem, right? Is if people think the answer is to just choose forward, and guess what? We're all jousting. We're all just using a toxic press go button to get out of any positional combat anyway. We need these, we need the combat, especially in the 1v1 sense, especially in the 1v1 sense, to have angles of attack, to like be trying to get around each other for position, like, you know, like asymmetrical exotic shapes of uh, velocity limits and ship capabilities and, you know, stuff like this. But you know, a simple go forward really fast button ain't, ain't the answer because then there's some other systemic issues from that. I know I'm rambling, but this is a complexity that nobody is talking about. You cannot find this level of discussion on anyone's React videos. So this is, this is deep. This is really deep. Now we're getting real deep. I'm we're glad I can cover it. things out like, like X-shaped uh, velocity spaces so that you can, for example, not fly as fast backwards as you can fly forwards. Um, but what this exactly does with the dynamics is insanely hard to predict, like even internally, because even when, when we're yep. playing internally, um, it doesn't like it produces some, some, some results. And sometimes we think, oh yeah, this might work or so, but the actual test is only when we, when we're playing with actual players and actually letting them play for a while, um, uh, uh, for, for a couple of days or weeks. So we can actually see if like the new changes or creating some dominant strategies that then can be not countered or something like that. Yeah, you make you make a good point. Testing on this is not something that can happen in a single afternoon. No, you can't you can't understand flight in a single afternoon. I'm telling you right now, like the guys in Shadow Moses, myself especially, you know, like we're it's minimum four or five hours a day for the last month straight. Like it, it may as well be a part-time job and for some of our guys a full-time job um and we see a lot of familiar faces in there i know a lot of the devs are in there incognito they've reached out um and uh are really thoroughly testing this and really stretching it to its limits but understand this right like there is not anyone in our discord that is of the opinion is of that have mastered it you know we are still learning every day it is a changing of the esp settings it's a changing of the curves of our um, strafes or the roll you know rate stuff like that we are trying different strategies and stuff and yeah for the most part there is a consensus that you, it's hard to play an aggressive play style near impossible there's a couple of people that are managing it but even that can get broken um, there's definitely that stuck in the river feeling that you know stuck in the arab bubbles the mirror matches don't intersect well 
there's not a lot of variation when classes go up against each other like if you're in a heavy or a medium you're playing defensive retreat try to block hits and then throw big haymakers when you can and then if you're a light fighter or you you know you're, you're trying to Floyd Mayweather approach which is get out of their way you know pick them apart over time you know there's not a lot of variation to that that probably needs to change if people want the game to get more deeper but um yeah it's like it's absolutely the case it's it's this is a thing even within the experimental modes that are available in a you can't Commander, pick it up those quickly can only show us master modes working in a select and very limited number of environments and situations and and one thing one thing i'll just say that's quickly bothers me too is a lot of people that are so vocal about things haven't played it and gotten good like that's the reality of it like you're gonna go versus some guy who's been playing master modes for a long time there's probably about 20 players and they are going to work anyone else that goes in there and i do worry that the people that are complaining about it the loudest are the guys who are testing it the least they have learned the least of it yes you are capable of picking up a stick getting into master modes and beating people quite easily that don't know what they're doing right or you could get in and get a shallow experience maybe five hours under your belt and beat majority of the people playing in there if you're familiar with your controls and have pvp in the past yes that does exist but you also need to learn you need to learn like uh awareness of the radar you know like you're when you're being targeted on the ui you're navigating or sorry maintaining your capacitor so that you aren't vulnerable to not being able to escape you know managing your chaff so that you've got and your distance when you're using it so that you're actually using the chaff and rather than just flying out of it you know like there's good capacity management not just dropping down as many you know laser repeater damage as you can and instead trying to big up build up enough for a large barrage managing distance like there is depth to it um it's not as deep as live certainly but again we've spoken about the live depth it's not a good shape um it's really gimmicky and broken but you know there is um you know a lot to learn in master modes it's not just people going in there and just playing it for the sake of it like again i can you know probably comment on this more than anyone else could um none of us have feel like we've mastered anything in master modes yet um do i think we're close yeah i think we're probably on the towards the end of the, the first lap you know like we're really close to it um some of our guys are just are not losing to other people consistently at all like some like i think we got a, a good monopoly on the scariest pilots in the game right now we just won a tournament today not even a few hours ago pretty convincingly um so i do think we've got a, a higher understanding than a lot of players um you know don't take that as an ego thing but um you know and it's weird because why are we the hopeful ones do we believe that it needs a lot of work it absolutely needs a lot of work especially in the 1v1 and the variation department and the interesting department it needs to get interesting there needs to be variation um and it needs to be more skillful with some depth um and maybe you know uh, less simplistic it needs work but this is a great platform because everybody's playing it okay like everyone is playing it the turret guys that have not done any pvp combat or squad battle combat for, for four years are now inside playing guys are in the constellation getting kills on targets that is happening right now we all know if we're all being honest with ourselves that the constellation was the laughing stock of star citizen for the last however many years you know so these archetypes these weight classes to ships are finally getting to play the game that's why it's good right and the combat makes sense because the fights aren't stretching out and never ending that is good the details of it need to get better right but the overall picture the framework great okay the game works people aren't lagging around teleporting disappearing you know like it, it functions it's just tuning tuning variation and specialization that needs to increase i think and that's you know a matter of time i think they're going to get there of course of course they will it's it's when it gets into the pu when you know when, when 323 comes out this is the next phase of testing 
and this is the next phase of information gathering. This is the next phase of attempting solutions with 323X or whatever, whatever comes after that. Um, and it's just, it's just important. I, I want to make sure that folks understand that Master Modes is no different than any other feature we've developed for Star Citizen over our long history. We'll put it in. We'll test it. We'll test it. We'll test it. We'll test it. We'll tweak it. We'll test that. We'll tweak that. We'll test that. And you know, and, and it'll either get to a point where we're happy with it, or it'll get to a point where you know we need to make changes to it. But it's it's this isn't. I want to caution against a lot of the doom and gloom. And the next question I have as from the chat is actually from Toastminster forty five. Hi, Toastminster forty five. Uh, he asks. How do the devs feel about all the discourse surrounding master modes on Spectrum, YouTube, etc., in the PvP community? Um, is does the doom and gloom from from a certain section of them bring you down? How do you how do you, how do you how do you fight against this? It, I mean, it doesn't really bring us down. It's more we see it as a you know, we see it as a challenge really to like you know kind of look at it you know because we tech everyone's bringing on board you know. And, you know, it's up to our job, you know, and working with any of the teams to kind of analyze the feedback, um, you know, and it's fine that players react in a certain way, you know, if they don't like it when they first play it. But, you know, we've also seen people that did like it and now they like it. So it's important to be balanced with the general view on the feedback. Yeah, it's important to realize that the people that are upset about it is the light fighter community wanting what they had. And the people that are happy about it are the other 80 percent that never got to play the game in a pvp aspect seriously until now you know so like as loud as they as the light fighter community and i'm on those guys side too right like you know i, I want i want the light fighter the combat dog fighting aspect of these big battles to be much better much deeper i want those things but it's important to note that there is a huge amount of people playing a test mode for master modes. There is a wide variation in ship selection um, and people from different backgrounds of what they want from the game are finding common fun in PVPing against each other. And that didn't exist until now. Okay. It's never existed. And if you were PVPing in a hammerhead, you were PvPing in a constellation. Congratulations, but you were role playing. Okay? Like you were role playing. Now you're on. Now you get to get on the field and play with the rest of us. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. You know, there's definitely some people that don't like it, but there's definitely some people that do. So it's about balance and And I know, think everyone we, will be happy yeah, with I, it. I, it's I don't, don't, inevitable don't, arrival kind of will be you know, that's a really important what thing. we all want. I'm yeah, sure of it. It's not personal. It's you know, it's you know, it's about the feature itself and it's up to us to make that feature as good as possible. So it kinda of motivates me personally in a way. You know, I'm not sure how the other members of the team feel, but that's the way I feel about it. Classic. I do wish that um you know, when it comes to the discord discourse with the rest of the community, I do wish Richard, I, like I've reached out to Richard Taylor. Some of my guys have tried to get him into our discord. He won't do it. Don't know why. Um, you know, and, and um, I do wish that the developers were more frequent discords and that doesn't just, you know, I'm not specifically just talking our discord or, you know, the, the PVP community discords, but just a lot of them, right? Like get it. Like what's so bad about, conversing with the community in a means that is in spectrum because spectrum is extremely flawed you know you can't get into voice you can't play with people on spectrum you know you're not it, video information isn't being presented to you like that um you know and stuff like that so it's not getting moderated it's getting drowned out um you know and i think that it it would serve the the this team um very well for the community and for themselves if they just got into the trenches with the community right like just hop in into a squad battle hop into a big org versus org fight get into it you know like um just play i think uh you know i know that's not the way they like to do things but i think that would provide um a lot of insight they feel like they're they can understand the frustrations of the players or the great feelings of you know what is good about the model and what isn't stuff like that but i do think that um given it's open development why not just go completely open you know play with everyone just integrate yourselves you know um i think it would be cool force ghost force ghost response rich <laughs> I definitely know that I, I see a lot of the feedback, whether it be negative or positive. And it's definitely helpful when we get the 
constructive. And the reason too, I, I, I say that is because like the community to, team were very, um have always been like policing and skeptical of, you know, favoritism. Like no one cares about favoritism. I you know, just get in and play with everyone. Get in with the people that are playing it the most. You know, this includes the people that are in the heavy ships, you know, like imagine there was a heavy fighter discord. Get into it, you know, like, um, you know, let, let, let them play, I think. Um, yeah, and I think entrench themselves with the, the rest of the community and they'll really get a sense of it, I think. Because the problem is, is like, there is some of the most high level development discussions, dueling, competitive combat that has ever existed in the Star Citizen happening in every night in a Discord. Like some of the conversations we're having in Discord, I get so lost in the mathematics. Like it's crazy, right? Like G Goloith, for example, talking about traversal velocity and stuff like that like or whatever the hell he's talking about and i'm just like what the you know it wasn't that it was something else but the point is you know there's some insane quality assurance work that is happening in player discords um you know in voice channels and uh i think i really want to make a video to kind of capture that um but you know there's some high level stuff going on um but because of the concern of favoritism, NDA stuff, et cetera. Um, you know, is it professional, whatever, I don't know. But um, because of that kind of soft boundary that exists between the players and the developers, um, you know, it's taking longer to get the feedback through, you know? Feedback, uh, when people will give us more like, hey, you know, have you guys thought about this? And it gives us a lot to think on versus just, oh, this is awful um so definitely keep that coming definitely keep all the good constructive stuff coming yep yeah. i do say though that like actually i mean ultimately um we need to decide what we're going to do with the game so just like to, even if you if you think that uh somebody else said what you think it's always important and uh, sorry i'm talking to our player base here right <laughs> please always put your feedback in write what you have what you feel like like the the feel is super important for us right yeah. because you can you can argue Describe about the like, problem you know, speed instead of just whatever, proposing right? a but solution can, all the time. But, but if you don't, if you forget what the feeling is, or to describe what your feeling is, then then often it's for me harder to understand what's actually going on. Um, but in general, I was I'm a re I was very happy with the amount of uh, <laughs> of feedback and the uh, the diversity of the feedback that we got. Even some of the negative feedback because AC MM or the master mode AC mode uh, experimental mode. We purposefully added some stuff in there just to try out how things feel. And some of the feedback, even when it was negative, quite often it actually matched up with our expectations, which also helps us to know that we're that we're on the right track, right? So, um, yeah, yeah, this was... yeah. That's a that's a fantastic point, Navy. I don't want to. I'm sorry for interrupting. I want to make. Sure, I, I don't want to lose that. Sometimes, you test a thing you think is bad. It, it's like it's like it, it's this this is a this is an aspect of of our project and all of game development that sometimes I think gets lost. Like, why would they put that out? And sometimes it's like, well, we think it might be bad. We think maybe that's not the way we want to go. We have a, a mechanism in these experimental modes for Runic Commander where we can test it. It's like, we don't have to guess. We don't have to wonder if maybe that's not the way. We can actually put it out Shout for out to you know, testing. The experimental then, mode no. So that so sometimes, and you're going to see this as experimental modes continue, as 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 the as the uh, what's the other PTU called experimental PTU or whatever it's called, uh, as that continues, we're going to use it to test things we're uncertain about. We're going to use it to test things that maybe even somebody's like, I don't really think this is the way to go, but I know one way to find out, and to put it out there. So keep that keep keep that in mind. Keep that in mind sometimes when when you want to put out. And I also want to say. It would be very easy. It would be very easy to write off a lot of the negative feedback as people don't just don't like change. And I'm sure that applies to some percentage of folks out there. I'm sure there are some percentage of folks out there who aren't giving it a chance because they just don't like change. But it would be yep. naive and stupid and dishonest and it would not be effective for us to just hand wave all of that feedback with that. There are there are there are people out there who simply liked and preferred the other way. And that's valid. That's a valid point and it's one it's one that we take in. It's one that I I've, I heard like Rich and all, all of us were on the I just want to mention too it's like 
I think people are in the best position to be the most critical about it if they master it. Like if you get good at a flight model, really good, you're going to have fun with it, even if it's the most broken jank there is. Because that's the feeling I have with live. Did I have fun with live? Yeah, I made all the videos about it. Like I arguably got extremely competitive in it. Um, and I'd consider myself a top player in it. But, um, you know, like, was I having fun in it? Yes. But was it fundamentally broken as hell? Yeah. Would I have as much fun if it was just thrown into my hands brand new? You know, it was my first day or my first week or my second week into the previous flight model, the live flight model. No, I'd be miserable. I'd be kicking and screaming. And then I'd get really good at it. Then I'd get all the dope being from winning and then I'd love it, right? So it's important, I think, to master it, get really good at it. And I'm not talking about just the group setting. Flying around a, in a buccaneer and just saying, man, this sucks, is really easy to do. Okay, you can hop into a Buccaneer, see the imbalance of the game, play it on easy mode because of the imbalance and then judge it really harshly. But that's too easy. That's the easy route. It's the quitter's route of judging the flight model. But you go in there, you start dueling in a Gladius, you know, in a light fighter, pushing this flight model to its limits. You start doing sweaty skirmishing with your friends, you know, or... Um, you know, in, into the multi-crew experience, into the heavy fighters, you start trying to overcome the light fighter advantage versus a medium fighter, stuff like this. You start stretching this thing to the limits, then I think you can be well equipped to judge it. And he is right. This goes right. If at first glance you feel like it sucks, okay, that's still important because there's going to be a whole lot of people that are going to get a first glance at this game. So you, it, that's not invalid. But if you're going to crusade and campaign against master modes, you have to master it first. Okay, like you can't judge the game of chess when you've played five games, right? Like it is important to say, yeah, like chess sucks at first glance. But if you want to write a full review, okay, a detailed full review, you're going to write a dissertation on this or, you know, like this huge spectrum thread. Maybe it's a video you're going to make about this. You need a master chess before you do it, okay? Or at least get extremely, extremely competitive in it. But just making, you know, all this reasoning as to why you are negative about it without mastering it, I think, and being able to say, hey, I got really good at this before I made a judgment, I think is, um, you know, falling short. And uh, I think we should strive for better. Um, but with that being said, I'm also not trying to invalidate people that are just saying uh, it sucks in the immediate feeling because that's it needs to feel good in the immediate feeling too. Um, but I do worry that that's the case. Like, you know, a, a lot of the people, I would say 90% of the people I see that are the most vocal about their negative aspect or the negative feelings about master modes, 90% of the people, 90% of the PvP community, 90% of the PvP orgs, 90% is where I would put that number, maybe higher, are not in free fly doing mirror match gladius fights. They are not extremely or very competitive in any dueling aspect of the game. I think they are hopping in a squad battle, they get into a buck, they get into a snub, they get into a constellation, they get into whatever. They shoot a bunch of people, they kill them really easy, they die a couple times because of mechanics that they're not used to, and then they judge accordingly. And it's like, I don't think that's fair to a game that we're all extremely passionate about, right? Especially the PvP community. You know, everyone is so harsh to judge it. And I tell you what, I think if they were to go into free fly and fight some of the guys I'm testing with frequently. I would also put Bayer in this argument because I know Bayer's on an alt a lot of the time. You know, I think they're going to get worked. They're going to be like, whoa, that was interesting. Damn, he worked me. Okay, how do I do that? And then they might become interested. Um, and like, I'm not invalidating people's opinions on the flight model, but still like, the, I do think that, you know, to judge it accordingly, you know, and to say that this was your loop, you need to relearn the loop. 
you know, what, what their intended design was. And I don't think people have reached the corners of what has been developed. I think they're judging it on the surface level. Like the Buccaneer is getting nerfed, okay? Or everything else is getting buffed, but that imbalance is not the future of master modes, okay? It's the same with, you know, the gunnery is not the final implementation. You know, like the the boost um, velocity limits is not the final limitation. The turn rate stuff, you know, like it's it's all under review um, and you've got to really get into it before you did it. And I'll just give myself an example or I'll give you guys an example from myself real quick. I was so against the pitch meta. I was so against it. Anyone who knows me close or was looking at Discord, I was kicking and screaming about isolating the light fighter gameplay into pitch. To be honest, I still don't feel that great about it. But I was protesting this hard. I still prefer the 45s because I think it makes more sense. I think it's um, more inclusive of play styles and, and creates variation. But I hated it. I locked myself into a room with it for two days. Now I'm not complaining about it. Okay. Do I think it could be better? Yeah. But that gross feeling, that horrible feeling, I overcome that with skill. I learned it. Now I'm not that uh, against it. You know, and um, so that's a good point, right? Is there's been moments where I pushed through hating this thing. And then I was like, okay, and then I got good at it. And I was like, oh, you know, that doesn't feel too bad, actually. Was literally my feeling. So keep that in mind, right? Like you, you sh you're going to master this thing, I think, if you're going to critique it with a, you know, and expecting people to be inheriting a wealth of knowledge. You know, like it's, if you are critiquing it because you've just got your hands on it and you're like man this sucks okay if you're clear about man you just got your hands on it and it sucks but if you're you know preaching you know at the top of your lungs you know to you know the wider community when you've only played it at a surface level then it's disappointing if we love the game as much as we do master it before you criticize it as heavily as you can because i'll tell you what you know i'm gonna feed the pvp community vegetables here a lot of you have not come even close to mastering it and um, are not competitive. You're not competitive in comparison to the people that are trying to master it right now. Um, so, you know, where you guys complain that noobs are judging, new players or newbies are judging live flight model for being bad, a lot of you are judging the master mode flight model and you're newbies at it, okay? So it's a bit rough on you, but I think that's the truth. Fine for, for a long time before the show started. And and I am unapologetically at one hour, 40 minutes on this video already, but I don't care. Yeah, and, and, and we, we take that preaching today, boys, we're seriously. preaching. I, I just, I want, I'm, I'm speaking on their behalf right now because I just, maybe it's easier if I do it. But we know that this is a change. We know that there are people out there who genuinely liked the old way and stuff. We believe this the is light fighter guys did <laughs> better for the longevity and the and the lifespan yes. of the game. Yeah, okay, so we're we're trying this. We're trying this. This right is now. the truth, bro. This is like I'm on CIG side with this. Like, you know, everyone benefits from this. The light fighter guys took a hit, and we have to trust that CIG will bring us back to what we want as well. But like, include everyone. Yes, you're right. This encompasses turrets heavy fighters capitals corsairs torpedo gameplays you're right jared and you shouldn't be apologetic because a lot of people are barking when they don't know what they're talking about and i don't want to discredit their feedback right i'm not but a lot of it's noise it is because they're not thinking about the bigger picture they're just thinking about their arrow cockpit experience in comparison to everything else you know, i i don't like to be negative and i don't like to you know, like point the finger at, you know, certain play styles or whatever. But, you know, I do think that um, that is the case with a large portion of the PvP community, I do. We believe in it. We've been talking about it since two Citizen Cons ago <coughs> when we first introduced it. So uh, I would like to encourage you to uh, stay the course, keep trying it, try yes. it in the PQ, try it in every other situation. Allow yes. us to continue tuning it, allow us to continue developing it. And... Everybody that I know, everybody I've talked to here, uh, both on the show and off the show and whatnot, is really excited about the potential of this. So, yeah, man. 
and I tell you what, like there weren't CIG developers playing live competitively, right? Like I, I wouldn't think so. And now like the whole studio gets to play, you know, like and and feel like they're a part of something, man. It's it's good. It just it needs to catch up for the guys that were stress testing the last flight model and pushing light fighter gameplay really far. Um, it does need to catch up in that aspect, but it will definitely like it naturally will. I don't think, you know, the flight team has abandoned the guys who have sweated it out for the last three years. It's just our tuning that we desire to make the combat interesting, faster paced, maneuvering based, stuff like that. It's going to take more time because it's deep and sophisticated. I hope you give it the chance. Yep. So that is God, I'm a CIG shill apparently, but I just am. Uh, the next big feedback. We're just in the feedback mode, so let's do this. What do you guys have to say to people who say that this is lowering the skill ceiling? Is this true? true. Is this false? Do you agree with it? Do you I think not it's agree true. with it? Does this make things easier? But it can come back up. Oh, that is a bit spicy. Um, I would so I would agree that at the moment, especially in the one v ones, we have a lower skill ceiling. Yes. Um, but um, at the same time, we're also lowering the the entry, like the uh, was it the skill floor, the skill floor to actually do uh, PvP or space combat in general, right? So I so I do think that for the longevity of the game, uh, the changes we're doing right now are actually suitable. Um, I think the, the question towards whether the the skill ceiling is a little bit lower is the same is the same question in terms of like what can we do to make one v ones uh, better, right? Uh, like it it, it kind of steers in the same environment, right? Um, so basically, for me, from my point of view, it goes back to just making the flight dynamics a little bit more dynamic and yep. a little bit better, so that people who are spending a lot of time in in their ships, they learn what the what the uh, ships actually can do. Um, yeah. And so that the maximum performance envelope of a ship is not directly always available, but you have to work for it in order. Yeah, you don't want, but you also don't want the performance of a ship to be pigeonholed into a single play style. Yeah, there is a primary play style for playing a ship, but you also got to give it a little bit of variation, a little bit of room for creativity. But um, I think that's kind of where it lacks right now, right? Like there's, not as much room for variation or creativity, um, you know, probably due to the simplistic shapes of it, but um, the ceiling has definitely come down. It needed to. The floor has come way down to make it more accessible. That's a great thing. Um, now I think the floor need the sorry, the ceiling needs to get a little more height to it. Um, and you do that through the shape of complexity, um, variation, um, and creativity right? Like in maneuvering and ship positioning, you don't just increase the, the flight speeds and the velocities guys. And then everybody starts zooming and booming without any worry about anyone behind us. The game starts to fall apart and the best players are the guys that if the game feels the most broken against, no, you want the shape to be about flight, about position, about angles, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of people just think, Skill ceiling came down because of master modes. Yes, it did. And it's down because of the speeds. No, it's down because of the maneuvering. Um, you know, and it can go way... The skill ceiling can be far higher than live. Here's a take, okay? Here's a take. This is turning out to be my Mona Lisa, by the way. This is it. This is advanced stuff. But um, the skill ceiling could be 10 times higher than it was in live while keeping these speed limits and a adjusting the ability to maneuver agility you know like creativity variation now the skill ceiling is way higher than the guys that are preaching for higher velocities at the top you know and i think that the guys that are preaching for high velocities aren't just referring to add plus 200 on everything like in their defense um, they're talking about like a less cage feeling between boosted and boosted, you know, a singular uniform speed that is a gradual progression that is sped up by the boost, stuff like that. I get that. But for the guys that are just like, this speed feels bad. It needs more. It needs to be way higher. Like, I think you guys don't know what you're talking about really. And you haven't looked at why they're trying to implement master modes because we want, you know, like to quote Avenger, we want the flight aspect to be the best thing about star citizen and i think 
to make Star Citizen's flight the best, you have to make it creative. Like, you want to be whizzing through asteroids, trying to gain position on ships using your turn rate advantage. You want to be spiraling around, you know, you want to be riding, you know, surfing a wave and stuff like this, carrying momentum of energy and make it this like, you know, art, you know, this insane performance. Um, but in live, the insane performance is some wiggling thing or, you know, you're seesawing, you know, or, you know, you're, it's, it's ridiculous. Like it's, there's no creativity in live. It's harder to do, but it ain't creative. You know, then you ain't pushing for position that ain't happening. So I think I've needed to give you guys some vegetables with this. <laughs> to get it. Um, that's at least what I, what I squeed out, out of that. Okay. Uh, let's see. We, 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 we're but the reverse of this, right, is that CIG need to do this because this isn't what I'm preaching here is not what has re been reached yet, but it's the trending direction, I think. I think this is where the train is heading. And as long as the train is heading in this way and the train hasn't stopped, I'm all supportive of master modes, Yogi, Richard, Bayor, and the boys, right? I'm all supportive of it. If the train's still moving in that direction, creative variation of flight, you know, and um, interesting performance, interesting ships, depth in the game without just giving and handing people gigantic amounts of power because their ship class is OP or whatever. But if we are heading in a sens sensible speed combat where everybody is included and the act of flying is something that is special, then Yes, I'm all on. I'm all in. I don't care what Greasy Khaleesi is complaining about on Twitter because Greasy Khaleesi's never been competitive. I don't care about, you know, what a lot of the people are judging about it on the surface level. Um, I do think, you know, their opinions are valid um, to a degree for sure and in certain aspects, but I'm, I'm all in, you know, and I'm not afraid to say that even if that gives me negative backlash from some people. It's not a popular opinion in the Star Citizen community, especially the PvP community. Um, I cop a lot of slack for it, but I don't care. I'm unapologetic about it. I'm all in if that's the direction we are trending in. Okay, so you guys have got my support. That's for sure. We're doing, we're doing good. Let's cut through. Let's, oh, let's, let's, let's do some so more far. of the big questions here. We're, we're, we're in our big questions. This video is going to be sick. In the center here. So I'm let's really take on this. racing. Uh, how will Master Mode make right now. racing viable and I need to go to my SCM nephew's speed birthday is too party. slow and the ship ain't i'm just reading it ain't, ain't agile pausing. enough with nav mode is that true so they're complaining about uh, ships was, this being, question came in, um, in a couple different forms uh not, in, in the yeah. questions right this is just the one i've chosen agile to read. Nav. uh but this is a race to folks thing. who think this is having a a, a a detrimental effect on racing okay so um i might just I skip with PT this about this, what players um, mean by that because technically there is no Sorry, and just um, getting nowhere. Uh, high skilled PvP players of <laughs> their of the capability. I'm gonna have to, to cut this video down because they couldn't the, they couldn't access that access uh, uh, acceleration anymore. So I believe it is that is part of the um, of the question why why it is perceived that you are less agile in uh, in racing. Would you agree, Michael? I, I would, and it's really an important question to understand our process a little bit because we we see comments like that and it's easy to go well that's just ron and then just go well we should just dismiss that but in reality what we do is well why are they saying that Let, let's look into the process let's understand the context of what they're saying and figure out what exactly is going on and yogi is exactly right it's it's the tricording issue you got a lot more acceleration from that and it's much more noticeable if you're going faster so it seems like when you're in nav mode, you have less control, even if necessarily the accelerations are different between nav mode and SCM. So we we don't dismiss feedback, even if it has sort of the, the wrong statements in it. We, we try to understand that context, understand what is that, are they getting at, what could they Based do that fail. they can't do anymore, and try right. to figure out if there's a, a problem there that we can address. I also, I have to imagine that every racetrack that's in the PU and created now was done with the old flight model in mind and that there might be need to yes. be some revisiting of so yeah yeah jared's right here i'm gonna skip past this a little bit but um yeah like the race tracks uh you know have tighter turns where the maneuverability might not exist longer straights where 
you know, um, master modes is more turn-based and agility-based and, you know, weaving between asteroids rather than going down a massive four-kilometer straight or whatever the hell, right? So um, he's right. Obviously, the racetracks need to accommodate for the flight model because if you watch Formula One, you know, they make adjustments to the racetrack based off the car performance. The car performance comes first. The racetrack comes second. That is inevitably the evolution of racing in this game um i don't want to comment on it too much because i'm not a racer um but it is i think that is an important aspect of it you know how it, i don't know if th that's refreshing to you guys but because i don't race i'm going to stay in my lane i'm not going to pretend i'm an expert on it like uh, other people would i think take the opportunity to do but um, um yeah it ain't up to me there be wrong for me to give I feedback on racing. Turn to, you know, all the multi-crew gameplay necessary for for these ships and stuff like that. Okay, here we go. Art complete, and it's not art complete. But even if the edges were art complete, why it's not? We don't just dump it into the precision universe. There, there's a, there's a there will be a time and a period where the eye of the, the focusing eye of development will turn to you know all the multi-crew gameplay necessary for for these ships and stuff like this resource network is the next big part of that and stuff and you will begin to find more and more uses for multi-crew people than just sitting and Hell firing yeah. in turrets because uh, we all want that yep we absolutely do and i and I've, i covered this in a last um, master mode feedback uh video um i think it was buzz cuts is that I, I think it's essential to capture um, in the balancing to justify the player count required to outfit a ship. Um, for example, and someone, I wanted to do a video on this on my comment section at one point, like go through my favorite comments, but one, one of you guys commented on my video saying, wouldn't it be great if the um, capacitor needed to be managed by like the co-pilot, for example, and it could provide like beneficial buffs? Hell yeah, brother okay the more people in the ship the more powerful it should become in all aspects so you know an engineering player shouldn't just be playing maintenance all the time i think he should be playing a proactive role as well you know like maybe he's pushing engines to the limit because he's down in the engine room maybe he's pushing the power to the limit because he's by the power plants making adjustments maybe you know not just putting out fires all the time i think giving engineering gameplay a prof um a blah, 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 a proactive buff to the multi crew gameplay would be great because there's an issue right now in Star Citizen right now, yeah, and it is that people ten pilots will get in ten constellations and capture eighty percent of the constellations' performance isolated in the pilot seat, and that's what a lot of people are predicting could be an issue with master modes is well, what's stopping constellation matter? You know, you get enough constellations together it gets hard to engage because you can't take them all out, you know? So um, I think that's a genuine concern. And I think it's only mainly a concern because the larger these ships get, some of them, a lot of the power is uh, narrowed down to the pilot seat. Um, and I think we need to, when it comes to multi-crew ships, take away a lot of the power from a, uh, from a pilot seat. You know, I don't like gigantic single-seater ships being, you know, huge threats by themselves i think they should be heavily dependent on multi-crew and i think the act of being in a multi-crew should be uh, a lot more proactive than just turrets like inventions um and not just you know playing maintenance you're not swabbing the decks you're not putting out fires fixing just wiring stuff like that very much and resource network is the next big the next big push on that uh and then there will be many others after that Really looking forward to this, man. There's so much How coming for us. Climate? Stealth, all this stuff. Relate to master modes. As an example, nav mode does not even have weapons or shields available. So does the power triangle just not do anything in nav mode? It does. Um, actually, there's, there's a misconception that in the shields and weapons are powered off. They are powered on because while you're on nav mode, they're still regenerating. They're okay. just not effective or yep. active, so to speak, right? So when like you're in nav me. mode... <laughs> I've learned something nah, here. So powder say. engines uh, when I'm in so, nav, I guess. As I said, like uh, the only thing that we currently have in is that when you're in nav mode, the regeneration rates of your weapons and shields are a little bit lower. Um, but whether we keep that or not is a different question. Um, so your your guns, they still regenerate ammunition. Your shields are actually not, they're, they're not regenerating in your shield phases. They're regenerating into a buffer. But when you're swapping back, back from uh, nav mode to SEM, 
that buffer is then filling up the shield phases quite quickly and it cannot be um oh, I didn't know when that. this happens uh, that process cannot be interrupted by any hits so when you come out um and your spool time is over you have the full available shield strength to you uh Great. will we be able to use countermeasures in that mode no at the cannot. moment not um and we don't want it to because right now missiles are a great way to counter nav mode exploiting right i call it exploiting because people can just use it to avoid combat right like instead of it being just a travel incentive um or used for navigation people are using it for defense making sure that um you know the flares and chaff is not usable in the nav mode creates a really interesting mechanic um, and allows uh, for a bridge between those two modes. If you take away chaff, uh, or sorry, allow for chaff and um, flares while you're in nav mode, you remove that bridge and there's further separation between the two modes. We need less separation from those two modes for the ecosystem to work with each other. So I'd be heavily against, heavily against using chaff and flares while you're in nav mode because missile gameplay is what keeps a lot of the trying to escape with nav mode in combat and then coming back gameplay in check okay it's not great you can still avoid the missiles with nav but they have a chance to catch you and you have to immediately start pl plotting or planning your deceleration back into scm to deal with the missiles that are coming after you that's great we like that love that don't know if it was intended but i'd be disappointed if they reintroduced flares and chaff inside of nav it's too powerful for nav. For honestly, I'm not too, or shall I say, the team. We we don't know yet if we're keeping this or not. Uh, I think it's actually behind Keep the scenes. Keep it. Um, at the moment, we don't see any reason to actually allow that screen. because we're re really my fast and gun, by the we way. would like at least the opportunity that the counter gameplay against missiles has more to do with your maneuvering and nav mode than just uh, putting out some. Yeah. Um, uh, putting out some countermeasures. Actually, yes. uh, maybe uh, Brent and Bayo, could you maybe talk about how this is currently being used in the uh, in the arena modes, uh, arena commander modes? Uh, sure. Uh, what we see is that people are using the base test. Here we go. The base test for Bayo. Let's check. Missiles Does he to pass? counter someone moving into nav mode. So hey, there we go. Yep, he's in there. He's in AC. When somebody is good, moving good. into nav mode, there's a spool up period. And if you're paying attention to the signature, you can actually see an, an EM spike on the ship. Uh, when yes, we love that. Mode. And so people who are... So people going into nav are more vulnerable to missiles than people that are in SCM. That's great. That's great gameplay. And we were already organizing as an organization to uh, make a heavy transition to EM missiles based off the nav spool runaways. It's an interesting mechanic. There's some depth there. Um, he's giving away some secrets, but uh, no. Very good, very Skilled based. And understand what that looks like can already start to spool up their missiles to set up yes. that. Or they can watch the speed. Stop they can it, you're the teaching them. The rate of separation that they see <laughs> is available on the UI. And they can start to lock on a missile and launch one to sort of counter that and force them either to drop out of dab mode to launch countermeasures or to figure <laughs> out a manual this. way to evading or take a hit from a missile. Yari, yeah, so based. Yeah, so based. That's great, that's great. Bail plays. Yeah, you can't you can't take it away from him. He's in there in the trenches. He understands it. This is this is some like moderately. Uh, it's some kind of deep gameplay. You know, like a lot of people don't realize this, especially when he mentioned the EM signature climbing. A lot of people aren't aware of that. Um, so, bravo! I'm impressed. He's in there. He's one of the boys. Um, there's some balanced things. I think we could probably talk about in the future to figure out you know how to get. The that to work oh, a little bit better. Good. But it is interesting gameplay. I need to play with Bale. Add a we need to go in a squad together, to I reckon. Of missiles than we had before. And I think it just, I, I, some of the behavior I've seen, and again, I haven't seen a fraction of what you've seen, some folks dropping chaff and then jumping and then switching into nav mode. Yeah, yeah. So you drop chaff, fly into it, try to, you know, hide in the smoke bomb for as much of the nav spool. They're inevitably going to come in there with you and then you gun it out. You've reduced half of the the nav pool and you're gonna you know take less damage for it so that's definitely a thing something i like to do is put you know maybe two chaffs side by side or maybe three in a line and then what while i know i need to spool the nav and then once i've dropped all three then i'll just you know keep jousting between those uh three chaff 
uh, clouds that I've dropped and spool the nav. Because if you're in the third one, then the first one, they're not going to see you. I um, mean, even if you put two side by side, if they're in the first one, you're in the second one, they're not going to see you, right? So they have to be right merged up close with you to see you. That's going to buy you some time. And you know what the great balancing effect of that is too? Is chaff is not an unlimited resource. You have very little of it. You have, what, five uses or so? Um, so yeah, like it's a good balance because it means that the first nav spool you try to get in combat will be relatively uh, easier to achieve. But then the second nav, now you don't have the chaff to get away. You know, now your boost might be a bit more, um, you know, depleted. Now your hull is in less of a condition because you're trying to escape for the second time and you took some damage on the first escape. So increasingly over the fight, escape becomes less possible or less probable, which is a great game balancer. And that is my pitch. Don't nerf chaff and flares not being used in nav because um, it's an important aspect of the balancing of trying to escape a fight, which has been a, notoriously an issue in Star Citizen for the last two years. Escape has uh, always been too easy. Tactic that's viable because the chaff can't be fired in that mode. Yep. And I want to clear that just got muscle. Oh, this is so right fun. Uh, this yo, is this is so fun to me because they're talking about my stuff. I guess like when you're a miner, you know, or, or a cargo hauler, and they start doing an SCL, it's like really fun because they're talking about it like that. But this is fun for me. This is really cool. Like they're talking about the stuff that I talk about every day. The, so this is just sick. Awesome. Saying that, you know, right now, the thought is that it's not usable in nav mode. That doesn't mean that some very compelling argument can't be made and yeah, no. change your minds. That it's, it's, I, I, I don't no, know. No, no, please. I don't know how many times. It's not that big of an issue though. Point. It's not that big of an issue. Like you need to be within 10 kilometers to you know get these target locks on missiles so like the the complaint isn't that the traders or the cargo haulers or the play the races whatever the non-combatants are that are traveling through nav mode they've already gotten that distance like if you were an scm and you're within 10k of a nav pilot that didn't want to be within 10k of you you're barely going to be in there for long you know and you've got to you know, switch to missile mode, spool up these missiles, get their logs, launch them, and hope to God that you're close enough for those missiles to impact. Or well, they're going to get out kited anyway because they don't have enough momentum to catch them at full speed running away. Right? So it's, it, I, I feel like this is a non issue. Um, and, you know, I think that it's been a, ga a great game balancer to uh, the bridging of these two mechanics because these two mechanics in separation are an issue. Um, which is why I'm very concerned about non-combatants easily escaping combatants. Um, you know, cargo haulers are spending all their days in nav mode with very little risk. That's a ma major concern of mine in the PU. Um, but yeah, of course, of the decade I've been doing this one out. It's 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 man, we are cooking you right now here in ISE and in SEL is work in progress. It's where Ooh. the thing is now at the moment we're having this conversation. Uh, there are things in ISC that change the day after the show goes out and the show goes out and then they're like oh by the way we changed this and i'm like you couldn't have that information just four days earlier that'd have been cool <laughs> you know it happens it's part of why it's part of doing all of this outreach in the middle of our development it's part and parcel uh we have a phrase where we stick we, we call the the truth of the moment uh we're always presenting See my guys uh, asking questions <laughs> room for a better idea to come later on so uh keep that in yeah. mind yeah, you know, and that's a really good point. It's like, this is about the now. You know, it's when we talk, we're talking about the now, but nothing, you know, we don't sit here and go, we're never going to do this, or we're never going to do that. You know, we've, you know, we've made certain, you know, we've made certain decisions based upon things we've learned and, you know, things we've seen along the way, but those things change. And, you know, so we're definitely not afraid of, you know, changing that rule, you know, in that circumstance, mm -hmm. you know, it's just one of the things that's open, you know, we, you know, we thought it might work that way, but if it doesn't work that way in game and the mm -hmm. feedback says otherwise, we'll just, you know, we can change it. Yeah. yeah there, there's, there's a bit here. We, we focused a lot on the, on the native because part of what we're here to do is to address, you know, some of the, some of those concerns and stuff like this, but there is, there's been a very healthy a groundswell of, 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 of positive feedback about masterminds. It's one of the reasons we're so excited about putting it out in 323 and seeing the more testing. Um, Mike, you mentioned you know be, uh, pe being able to check the EM readings and stuff. The next question I have here is, are there any changes to oh, generalized stealth mechanics 
uh, with master modes, besides Ooh. being able to tell when they're switching. Uh, are there any other changes to how people will work in missions? Yogi? Um, yeah, it might oh. be a question for Yogi. Uh, yeah. We have put in changes recently, not specifically to master modes. Uh, people might have noticed them actually in 3.22.1. Broadly, uh, there's been some changes to signature readouts and how those work, yep. uh, thanks to some of the you know the communication between uh, my team and, and Yogi and Rich, Rich's team, uh, to be able to kind of go over that. But there's been some changes, and those have been inherited into the master mode stuff as well. Yep. Um, yeah, like the Hornet Ghost has a lower signature and stuff like that. What role, if anything, does the component? Oh, I thought we were going to get more of that rework the the resource network like 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 again we don't want to go into the the full breadth of the resource network and stuff but is there but it's an interesting question right like does having external missiles and stuff increase your signature on radar stuff like that internal missile bays lower it what are, what's cig's realistic um idea of a heavy stealthy ship and what detection rate would that look like like at what point would you be seeing them um you know are we going to get different tiers of radar scanning is that a future ship component you know um will radar based ships um like the hornet tracker have a significant radar advantage in comparison to other ships and be a key component to a fleet or a squad um that, that that stealth question could have gone really deep but i already know the answer is they aren't even thinking about it yet but boy oh boy will stealth gameplay make this game a lot of fun really looking forward to it um and yeah you know i think um but i don't think we're anywhere near that we're talking flight you know we're not anywhere near stealth yet boys but when we are exciting times ahead I think there were a number of questions, number, probably only three, but of, of people who are wondering if this work is completely separate from resource network uh, or if or if this work overwrites, like does the, the does the archetype mean we can no longer tune our components, we can no longer change the performance profiles of our ships because they have an assigned archetype now because of master modes? Uh, are, are these exclusive or are these complementary features? Um, I think... They're definitely going to complement each other. You know, we're definitely waiting to sync with each other on what these features mean for the flight. You know, and you know, I don't think you're going to see anything taken away. You know, I think you're going to get more out of this. You know, you're going to be able to move your ship and your components in more directions in the future. Um, you know, which will kind of strengthen what that ship means. You know, depending on the choices you make for that ship. Um, you know, and it's critical to the flight. It's critical to the combat performance. Um, you know, and it's critical to that moment in time, you know, so if, you know, so if you've made certain choices, it's going to mean certain things, you know, you know, let's say, you know, your signature and heat goes up, you know, in sync, you know, it's going to, you know, make you more, you know, kind of vulnerable and stuff like that. So the player's going to have more choice um, in the future. Great. So. Um, some of what you've said about, you know, nav mode being intended to, you know, help you escape and stuff has obviously made some players who dream about being a bounty hunter. You know, kind of nervous. It's, yes. it's like, oh well, you know, if if the mode switch is designed to help people, you know, be able to get away. Um, obviously, we're going to have to do something to, uh, to to help with folks who want to pursue a bounty hunting profession. Uh, I know Yogi, you already said we're you know a lot of the QD uh, QED work and stuff is still to be decided and stuff. But what are your initial thoughts? What are your initial thoughts on 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 what we can do to make master modes work for players who specifically want to catch up and capture? Uh, their prey when yes. they created a mode design. The million dollar question. Well, I mean, it, it still boils mm -hmm. down that uh, to that you cannot just like, like if somebody wants to escape and he has the better equipment to do that and he has more experience and skill or she, then that ship might escape. But if you... In EVE Online, they have um, like warp scramblers and warp webifiers and stuff, right? These are mechanics to trap and slow down a player. Um, then the problem is, is a ship can counter that by sacrificing a slot in their capability called a warp stabilizer, you know, or a web stabilizer, right? Like, um, and so I like the idea of like, you know, maybe a cargo hauler to prevent interdiction will sacrifice a shield slot for warp stabilization or you know quantum stabilization call it 
and then that means that you know the players that are running with the mantis you know are now not as uh successful and it's an addiction not saying it should be impossible but we're gonna have a harder time maybe they need more mantises to achieve it but then the mantis can sacrifice its shields and get another <laughs> in addiction device to strengthen that even more so you know and, and that makes for interesting ship builds um you know and very cool I think the game could get really interesting at that point. But with that being said, the core issue of this is we need the ecosystem to work uh, between nav and combat. Uh, and it is a major concern of mine because I worry that it is a soft PVP slider if we can be at nav mode 24 seven. Cause then the only threat is maybe missile locks um, and then an interdiction, you know, but outside of that, which of you know, hard to get the missile lock in time with those speeds in the lo comparison to the lock time. Um, there is no bridging mechanic that we know of, and the interdiction is hard to just create on the fly. Um, so, and you know, how are you going to maintain an interdiction if you go to nav mode and it drops the interdiction? You're no longer dampening, for example. So, it's a major concern of mine. You want to work as a bounty hunter, you are reliant on having very dedicated equipment, anyways. Um, one of the things we're thinking about here is the importance of um, distortion weapons, uh, since the um, okay. quantum drive is the thing that allows the uh, velocity advantages or speed advantages in nav mode. Uh, we were thinking about making the quantum drive, for example, very susceptible to distortion damage. But being uh, susceptible to, to distortion damage means that the attacker needs to bring either a, a, a EMP device or they need to bring or swapping out some of their of their hard pounds, which actually distortion weapons. And distortion weapons are always going to be less effective as in taking down shields. In fact, in 3.22.1, we actually did a pretty big change to the distortion system so that shields are very resistant against distortion damage. So you need to bring energy weapons to actually bring them down, which um, again, goes a little bit more in the direction of like, as a player, you're, you're being forced just to bring specialized equipment. But if you have specialized equipment, then you are absolutely still able to uh, to do your bounty hunting stuff. Um, a little bit of an equation is, uh, or part of the equation is there, how big are the ships that you can, that you can trap and snare, right? But that's also something we need to yeah. have yet to answer internally because there are some, some situations where, oh, there's a tiny little ship. Why can I not jump away with my 890, right? right. And so on, so. Yeah. And it's not a and it's not a discussion that is exclusively for you and your team. Obviously, there it will, it will also involve gameplay designers. You know, the people who are assigned to build out the bounty hunting career will obviously have a say in, in that kind of stuff and and what kind of tools and and uh, methods uh, we can make available to them to uh, work within the master mode system to still achieve your stuff. Uh, it's the the bounty hunting dream. The bounty hunter dream is core. You know, it's one of those. It's one of those core things. We've talked about it forever. Uh, it's 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 a it's a. I can speak if I'm allowed to speak for CR here. It's it's something he's very very interested in, interested in, always has been and stuff. So so while we may not have you know specific answers or details for it now, when it comes time, when when for Bounty Hunter B2 or whatever version we're on, I honestly can't remember the name now. Uh, you can expect to learn more information about it when that time comes. Um, all right. So where, I think where, also um, tractor beam gameplay got mentioned as like an offensive ship loadout, you know, like so maybe you could sacrifice some weapon slots for uh, tractor beams, you know, and, and that would snare and slow down your target. Um, there's definitely some mechanics in the future of it, but those mechanics are probably a year or two away, right? Like probably longer. So um, it's definitely a concern. We want to be able to catch these targets because that's what the ecosystem is. Technically at time, but I want I want to I want to do not all I the can. time. I want to do not two for more free. questions. Can I do two more questions be possible. before I let you go? Reasonably yes, possible. let's go. I asked you. Yeah, in, yeah. I asked you live so that you can't say no without looking like a jerk. So, <laughs> um, these are questions more about balance. Uh, this question came in and says, "What are your red lines in terms of balance? Are there any parameters that you're simply unwilling to adjust, like?" SEM speeds or IFC a slowdown. Is there is there anything off the table right now? It's like no, the, the, it's this. We won't even listen to this. We won't even consider this. Uh, maybe another game company person would never ask his developers this, but I'm, I, I want to see. I want to know. Talk to these people. Is okay. there is there anything that's actually off the table? 
okay, so nothing is off the table. Of course, we're somewhat more resistant towards certain things than others. Uh, like, uh, obviously, like the SEM speed limits were are a couple of, uh, like, was brought up by the community quite a lot. Um, but then again, uh, we're getting a lot of, like, advantages from that. Um, so we will yes, try we to address the worries uh, that, that we have, for example, like, in usually when people say, oh, the speeds are too slow, um, this means either they cannot go fast from A to B, or it means they're not evasive enough, right? But th these can these problems can be solved in a different way. So concerning the speeds, we will try to be rather conservative with changes. It does not mean that we're fixed, right? If we if our gameplay tests with the community show, oh, shit, we should just add like 100, 100 meters per second more, fine, we'll do it, right? Um, mm -hmm. But it needs to be going through a proper process internally um, because like it's it's just not something that we can right away promise but nothing and i mean nothing nothing <laughs> is ever fixed right yeah and that was a problem too i think that chris was keeping maybe flight or something like really close to his chest and it was probably hard to get decisions by chris but i think these guys have got, been given full authority it sounds like um so you know that's a good thing you know like but I, I, and i'm not opposed to the speeds coming up ever okay i just want to see what this was intended to be designed as reach its potential before it gets, you know, like before we start talking about just increasing a blanket speed on everything. Okay. I'm not completely off that idea, but I think it's the least of our issues right now. And I think that there's so much potential in what we have, but yeah, I like this, like I don't know, they're open to anything, but we're going to go through the journey and we're going to make sure it's the right answer. So yeah. Uh, you know, and, you know, and I do think it's important to say that, you know, like with, you know, any kind of virus stuff that we're tuning, you know, we're always open to trying different things, but we've set out a framework of what we think works. And in the end, it comes down to a choice, you know, because before we had a lot, you know, you know, we had a lot higher speed and that wasn't always positive. So we've made the decision based upon certain factors that a lower speed works better, but it doesn't mean that, you know, moving to a lower speed means it never has any negatives because the choice is end of the day, you know, we've made that choice to go slower, you know, and we do think, you know, overall it's going to be better than the speeds we had before, but you know, it's never going to be a hundred percent, 10 out of 10, yep. you know, it solves every single problem, you know, that we have in the game, you know, for example, because we're based in certain physical realities of flight, you know, and, uh, you know, kind of power performance and stuff like that. So we, you know, we're a little bit kind of tied to kind of physical realities more than kind of saying we're not going to change these numbers. Yeah, yeah but Rich, I want to, I want to be able to do everything I want to do at any time I want to do it, and be the only one who can do so. I don't want anybody else to be able to do that too, so that I can. Uh oh. Win. That's all I'm asking. What do I feel like Sounds he's like referencing he someone? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sounds like he's trying to be Luke Skywalker there. Yeah. No, 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 no. Han Solo is the best pilot in Star Wars. Don't even. I'm sorry. What did he I say? Wants Han to Solo. Take out That's trash. Death Star is Lando Carizian is the best pilot. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lando. I'm sorry, Lando. I besmirched you and said Han Solo. This is the best pilot in Star Wars. This dude took out a Death Star in a freighter. Oh, well, I'm gonna have Not to cut down this video, in boys. Air. We can go in and out in, in a tunnel. Didn't. Know I'm gonna have to cut down this video because it is long. I'm I'm staring at it. It's two hours twenty so far. But this, I'm I'm really enjoying this. Um, and I, I think I'm going to cut out a good 40 minutes at the beginning. You said that? Drop off the call. Bye, Brent. Thanks, <laughs> That's a red line. <laughs> That's a red line. <laughs> yeah. You flustered me so much, you made me say Han Solo was the best pilot. What the hell? <laughs> All right. So last question. This was always going to be a tough episode. Hold my safety, Lando. Um... So after release, after 3.23 goes live, what metrics will you be watching to determine which portions of master modes are successful and which may still need additional tuning? Uh, tuning. This is... Good question. I want people... This is not This is not a comprehensive list. I'm not going to say that these are the only things we're listening to. Just give us some example of after 3.23, these are the, this is the kind of feedback we're looking for. The, the, this is what we're looking to see positive and negative results on. What are, what are we looking at afterwards? So usually what I'm looking for to pass on to Yogi and Rich is 
ways to deepen what we have. Yeah. So I, what I, what I see of what we created is a framework. And so now once we have a framework, we need to find ways to add depth to it later, to add individuality. Yo, bro, yo, based as hell bail, dude. Let's go. These individual archetypes, individual ships. And so that's the kind of feedback <laughs> I'm looking for uh, is, you know, somebody specifically talking about, hey, I I'm trying to use my, my car to all, my sand talk yai, and I'm finding it not very effective in these specific ways. And it doesn't match the role that as described. I'm looking to pass that kind of information off or I'm using, you know, my, my vulture and it's basically impossible for me yep. to get out of a combat scenario. I never yep. do. I'm always trapped into it. Yeah, it's important. He's so on base here, um, massively on base with the depth. Um, and then also the inclusiveness of uh, the non-combatant ships, right? Because the gazelles need good balancing too, okay? Not just the uh, the wolves. You know, those kinds of things where players are presenting problems that I can then pass off to the team with context and go, okay, this is what we're seeing players observing. Does this match the design we're going for? Maybe we need to make some adjustments there. Um, and it's it's that deepening. How can we add further depth? How can we add further skill checks? How can we actually make this within a, the framework a bit better of a, a skill curve, a little deeper, all that kind of stuff? That's usually what I'm looking for. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Uh, you lost me after you said somebody was flying the car too well. I'm no, like, based based as hell, bail. That's what we're gonna call him. I'm literally going to rename him in Discord right now. Where is he? Hold on, in Discord. We are renaming him to Based Bail. There we go. Done. Yep. Done. Awesome. That's that's you spot on. That. that is the confidence I we fly needed. I the car to all. <laughs> that's good. All the time. <laughs> From the back seat. Yep. Ooh, awesome. Oh, I'm tangled up in my ears. It's provocative. All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, but just to add on that, okay, right? there, 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 was, there was some more to it, though, right? Because what we're also getting from micro teams are sometimes uh, recordings of actual flight combat that happens, which we can then analyze and go forth and back. Uh, we're getting we're getting KDR graphs and so on. So sometimes we see that something is wrong in the data. There is a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot of stuff that is going on. Uh, like it's 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 not just like the the, quant uh, the qualitative stuff that that Michael just described it's also it's also uh, quantitative data um, yeah Th that's an important part of I, I do want to mention that we don't just look at spectrum and reddit or, or YouTube videos and go this is how it is um, we compare that what people are saying with what we observe in the the data from our behavior analytics too we look at kill to death ratios we look Ugh. at accuracy values and we combine that with our own Man. observations in the game. So sometimes people might be like, you know, multi-crew ships are terrible. And then we'll look at the kill-death ratios and we'll go, well, it looks like they're doing really well. And then we'll go into the game and look, you know, and go, wow, everyone just avoids them. Uh, and like that provides that kind of context. We don't ever look at a singular piece of information and go, this is the, the you know, the truth of the, in the, of the experience. We look at everything we possibly can to provide all of that context. And that's their... Uh... Unless they're a content creator in which their opinion weighs 10 times more than everybody else. Based, nope. based disco. All right, we're renaming disco back to Penalf. No, kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> content no, content rude. Kind of, also, kind of I guess that's me now, right? I was right? really trying to keep it. I guess that's me nowadays, right? I'm just a React YouTuber. I keep getting teased about. But yeah, I guess it's me now too, I guess, yeah. A straight face with that one. You cut away. I, I never I considered myself one, but. Just how strong a straight face I could keep when I said that. I've been having too much fun. That's it. That's our awesome. show, everybody. Thank you for sitting through another episode of Star Citizen Live, our, 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 our weekly live stream at the end of our week. This is Lando. I'm still thinking about that Luke Skywalker comment. Um, if you haven't checked out uh, this week's ISC, uh, it was a wonderful episode about many of the FPS improvements uh, that are coming online in the upcoming Alpha 323. Uh, not all of them, uh, uh, but some of them. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, for SCL with the members of the FPS team there. All those folks you saw there, we'll, we'll see if we can't get cool, Zach, so to Zach and stuff Shades next week. with him. He literally showed up to the interview with Shades and Oh, Shotgun, man. And I'm like, we need to get in on the questions for the FPS stuff because a lot of people didn't look at my ISC React. never does that well, but... um. 
I'm very critical of the FPS experience. I feel like we're really kind of swiping under the rug how bad it's performing. So that'll be very good. I should get into some questions. There's some hard hitters. You're not getting away with that. We're put, you, 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 we made his mom very proud anyway. Uh, and then of course, uh, next week's ISC uh, is a big one uh, that I know a lot of folks have been waiting for. Uh, it's the character customizer in Alpha 323 eh. uh, in, in much of its glory. Uh, still a work in progress, but um, just what we're already seeing is some, some cool stuff. You may have seen some sneak peeks in this week's uh, show. Um, it, it, it's going to be a good day for, for, for truly taking ownership of your character going forward. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, yeah, we're going to raid somebody. I think we're raiding. Uh, is, it, is it still PC 101? I think we're still raiding PC 101. That should show up above the, above the chat there. Um, if you want to uh, uh, go raid a PC 101 or whoever, whomever it ends up being, uh, be nice. Uh, be respectful, uh, and uh, when you when, wipe your feet and say, uh, we love you, John Crew, uh, when you're there. Cool. So um, we'll wrap it up there. What a, what a video, man. Like, I am real. This video, this SEO really stimulated me, as you guys obviously already know. That was great. That was conversation at a depth that does not exist in content creation. You will never find this much depth on master modes as a topic um, with anyone really. So this just like, this video like spoke to me, right? It was the nitty gritty of it. Um, the complexities of having to design it and stuff and the realities of it. So, so good. This was really eye opening. And I tell you what boys, I don't care anymore. I'm all in, okay? We are heading in the right direction, okay? Um, too many things have been solved by master modes. They are talking right now about how they want to get it more in the direction that you're all complaining about anyway. Um, so, no, nope, I'm all in. I have full trust in these guys now. Um, it's just a matter of time. Um, and the time does need to be reasonable, by the way. But uh, yeah, very cool. Based Bayor as hell. XLB has been putting in a crazy amount of work on the bug fixing and stuff. So awesome um, that he got in on this. And then uh, Yogi and uh, Richard trying to put together flight. If there was any key aspects that come away from this was I am nervous about the interaction between non-combative players and combatants. I worry that the um, nav mode might be too powerful to overcome when it comes to the interaction of that part of the ecosystem. Um, what else am I worried about? I'm worried about that they might be, might be too comfortable in the simplicity of the ship characteristics in regards to spheres and just eggs. Like, and trust me, like I am very much, um, you know, a critical, more critical of our own guys feedback than probably anyone. But I think our guys are onto something when they're talking about the strawberry and unique shapes of the speed limitations, because I think that creates the best uh, positional combat uh, uniqueness, depth and complexity that Bayer was uh, referencing that he's on the lookout for. I think the answer to unique ships personalities isn't just in turn based um, and, you know, some values on the front of the egg coming up in comparison to the side or something. I think experimenting with more unique shapes could uh, make things far more interesting it's very complex but so is the game um what else i worry about uh how the gunnery system kind of snuffs out good flight i think um the weapon ranges are still long i wish that was a question in there uh, that's the question i probably would have asked um in hindsight um, because I do feel like a lot of the gunnery kind of replaces a lot of the flight in the aspect because gunnery is so strong at such a distance as well. Um, but I wouldn't want it to get nerfed too hard, you know, just put back a little to allow for more growth in the flight department. Um, aside from that, man, I can't think of anything. Um, good video. Based as all hell. I am in on master modes. I want us all to be happy, including the guys complaining about it in regards to speed. I just think it's relative, right? Um, but, uh, based, based and good. Enjoyed that thoroughly. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to trim down this two and a half hour video. 
this will be the last SEL react I think I'll do but boy oh boy I don't regret doing it because that was great I had a lot of fun um let's mix things up I want to see let's see I want to see um I don't know put abc in the comment if you got this far okay abc so if i catch any of you guys with the one two three i'll know who aren't the real ones okay it's abc abc in the comment section boys i appreciate you all i'm definitely trying to compile a video of the comment section my favorite comments and stuff so look out for that i'm reading all of your comments it's hard to get to them all but i'm trying to um just awesome boys the the future is very promising i think and um, I'm positive, toxic positivity over here. GG's, I will catch you in the next video, yeah? Peace.